Um, today's webinar uh, is going to be on the ins and outs of the USC jobs application process. So hopefully everybody is excited to hear this information, um, ready to take some notes. But on that accord, just want to let everybody know that um, the slide presentation from today will be sent out to everybody. Um, following this webinar so you do not have to worry about jotting down copious notes that you see on the screen um, in addition to that as you just heard the webinar is being recorded it will be posted to our youtube channel at the uh, beginning of next month um, so all of our top 10 series are posted to our YouTube channel once per month, uh, the following month that it is being recorded. So please look out for it there if you feel like you miss anything today. Um, and in addition to that, we are we will be taking questions in the chat box. So if you um, have any questions that uh, you think of during the presentation, feel free to use the chat box. I have a whole host of colleagues on today who will be fielding questions from the chat box. And if we have time after the presentation, we may take some um, questions and go over them after the presentation as well. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Yeah. All right. And again, my name is Marla Lazarus um, with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services in our Office of Human Capital. Um, specifically, I am the recruitment coordinator in the Division of Global Hiring and Outreach. So we are responsible for all things recruitment and outreach um, for the entire agency. So we're going to be going over a few high points today of the USC jobs application process. First, we're going to talk about some of the different hiring paths uh, to get into the government in general. And we're going to talk about the USA jobs search, the search itself. Um, as you probably know, the USA jobs website can be a bit cumbersome. Um, so I want to go over all the ins and outs of that. Then we're going to talk about the anatomy of a vacancy announcement. And then we're going to kind of sum it all up at the end. So I just wanted to start with this um, interesting quote I found online. So everybody is joining today probably from a different um, perspective. Some of you may just be um, you know, applying to the federal government for the first time and just want some initial tips. Some of you may have been applying for some time and uh, maybe having a little trouble getting into the government. So you really want to uh, hone your skills on this USA jobs application process. So the quote I found is job searching is like a pinata. If you hit it hard enough, you will be rewarded. rewarded. Um, and so as a recruiter over the years, I've talked to many folks who have been applying for years to the federal government or to CMS. Um, and then eventually they get in. Um, I've also talked to people who apply to one job and they get in on their first try. So it really um, may not have too much to do with your specific background or skill sets. Sometimes it's just timing. And so sometimes you just have to keep applying um, and know that when the situation is right, then it's going to work out for you. So we're going to get into our first topic here, which is different hiring paths. So there are two hiring paths to get into the federal government. Um, and in layman's terms, one is competitive and one is non-competitive. The competitive process is what we traditionally think about applying through USA jobs, getting rated and ranked with other candidates that are applying basically the general public. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. Non-competitive um, hiring authorities, uh, for those people who may be eligible, you may be, be able to be considered outside of the USA jobs application process. Um, this is going to apply to uh, a few categories of people, which I'll get into in a second. Um, the unfortunate part for that is each agency accepts these applications a little differently. So if you do fall into one of these categories I'm about to cover, um, you kind of have to uh, contact each agency individual process is to accept those resumes. So with that, I'll quickly cover this and then we'll get into the, the meat and potatoes of USA Jobs. So outside of USA Jobs, if you are um, an eligible veteran, you may be eligible for one of our veteran hiring authorities. Three are noted here, the veterans recruitment appointment um, and that we are able to appoint eligible veterans up to the GS 11 grade level. 
For the 30% or more disabled veteran hiring authority, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you are have a service-connected disability of 30% or more, we're able to um, appoint you at any grade level pending qualifications. Um, and the Veterans Employment Opportunity Act allows eligible veterans to apply and compete for positions that would traditionally only be open to current federal employees. Some other special hiring authorities is hiring authorities for our military spouses. If you fall into that category, um, you may apply and complete, uh, compete for, again, positions typically only open to federal employees, or you can apply uh, to positions open to the general public and be referred non-competitively. <clears throat> and then lastly, the Schedule A, Schedule a Hiring Authority for in Individuals with Disabilities, excuse me, I'm uh, tripping over my words here. Um, it is eligible to all persons with an intellectual, a severe physical or a psychiatric disability. Um, again, this is outside, can be outside of the normal USA jobs hiring process um, and only a Schedule A letter would be required for that. Um, we did just complete um, an entire webinar on all of these special hiring authorities that I just mentioned. Um, those are going to be on our YouTube channel probably by tomorrow. So feel free to visit um, the CMS YouTube channel. If you feel that you've fallen in, into any one of these categories, you can go back and listen to that webinar from a few weeks ago. Um, and then lastly, the Pathways programs for students and recent graduates. Some of our um, uh, listeners today may be in that category where you're a current student or maybe a recent graduate. Um, we do have the Pathways programs. The internship program is for anybody currently enrolled um, in a degree seeking program at least half time. Our recent graduates program is for anybody who's recently graduated within the previous two years or for the semester that they are planning to graduate. And the Presidential Management Fellows Program is for advanced degree um, students and recent graduates, so that's masters or above. Um, so again, uh, we did do another webinar on our Pathways Program, so feel free to visit our YouTube channel for that. Okay, so now I'm going to get into what we all are here today to talk about, um, which is the USA Jobs application process. So when you log on to USA Jobs, depending on <clears throat> how long it's been since you've been on the website, this is what it looks like now. Over the years, they have really done a fantastic job of stream streamlining the website and the process itself. Excuse me again. So here's kind of the step-by-step -step process. So if you're new to this, um, some people on the call may, you know, have never applied before. So this is what, how you want to start. Um, so you visit USA Jobs website, step one. You need to create a profile, an account for yourself, and then set up your profile. That's step two. It's going to go through a list of questions. It's going to prompt you for everything to fill out. The next thing is you can create or store up to five resumes in your USA Jobs account or your profile. Um, so what I suggest is kind of start with your most general resume and then as you are applying to positions, you'll see that you may need to tailor or target some of them and then go ahead and save those um, targeted resumes in your account as well. Um, and then the last thing is you will be able to upload at uh, up to 10 attachments. And so that could be everything from a cover letter to transcripts, um, to supporting documentation, if you do feel you're eligible for any of those hiring authorities I just mentioned, if you're a veteran, that would be your um, discharge document, your DD-214, a Schedule A letter, so any of these documents um, that would make you eligible for any of our special hiring or non-competitive hiring authorities, you want to upload those documents as well. So as you get into the search, you're going to find um, that there's a lot of search criteria that you can use to narrow down your results. So the first thing you'll see is just basic keyword and location search. That's the top bar you saw. Let me just pull it back up. So at the very top here, you see keyword and location. You can always search, start your search um, by using keywords and locations. <clears throat> Depending on how familiar you are with the federal federal employment in general um, is really going to tell whether that's going to be helpful because you may not <clears throat> know a whole lot of keywords to search by, but it's a good starting point. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little dry today. <laughs> Um, it's a good starting point uh, for anything. 
Then the next part is they have about a dozen or so filters that you can really start to narrow your results by. So if you just do an open search, you'll probably see hundreds of thousands of jobs posted. It is USA Jobs is the website where all um, almost all federal government positions are required to be posted. So federal agencies are required to use, US, use USA Jobs to announce their vacancies. So again, hundreds of thousands likely uh, positions you'll see. Um, but here's the filters are what you want to use to start narrowing down those jobs. So you can narrow it down by hiring path, which we'll talk about in a second. You can narrow it down by salary, a job series, job title, agency, department, um, any myriad of different filters um, that you can use, geographic location, obviously, um, to get to really the jobs that you are interested in. And the last thing I want to talk about on this screen is the very bottom, the save search. So as you are narrowing down your search results and you find a good combination of filters that really gets you to the jobs that you're interested in and looking for, I encourage you to save that search. Um, that is a feature that USA Jobs has and you are able to save all of that search criteria and note uh, on that save search how often you want to be notified of any uh, position that may meet that criteria uh, that gets posted as a new position. So let's just say, for instance, you're looking for accounting positions in Washington, DC. So you use that as your criteria. You're able to see all of the ones that are currently posted, but anytime a new accounting position in Washington, DC is posted, you can be emailed um, either immediately when it gets posted, you can be notified weekly, there may be a monthly option as well. My suggestion is to be notified um, daily or weekly so you don't miss um, any announcements. A lot of times, uh, sometimes job openings may only be open uh, for five business days or two weeks. Um, so if you do it any longer than that, you may miss some openings. And so this is the hiring paths options that I just mentioned on the previous slide. So the hiring paths is a great new um, search filter that USA Jobs uh, created to really um, help candidates find the positions that are available to them. <clears throat> so the first one you'll see is open to the public. Obviously this is any US citizen, national, or those who have allegiance to the US. So anybody um, that meets that criteria can apply to positions open to the public. You'll also see again about a dozen other uh, hiring paths that you may fit into. So if you are a military spouse, um, make sure you check that uh, authority. As I mentioned before, military spouses are eligible to apply to positions that may only typically be open to current federal employees. Uh, veterans, students, and recent grads, all of these different options are a really great way to narrow down positions that are right for you. And the last thing I wanted to talk about um, in the, the general search topic was at the bottom of the home page of USA Jobs, you will see an events um, section. And what you will find is any event, sometimes they're hiring fairs, sometimes they're informational webinars like this one. We tend to advertise our webinars on USA Jobs. <clears throat> but you may find some really good events that obviously most of them are virtual these days. Um, that you could be interested in um, participating in on the USA Jobs events section. So keep in mind for that. Okay, so now we are going to get into the anatomy of a vacancy announcement. So we're at the point now you've narrowed down your search results, you found some positions that you are interested in and are a good fit for you based on the filters and the criteria that you've set. Um, and so what you'll see is a screen that comes up with all of the positions that meet your criteria and what the position title of each position will be a hyperlink. Once you click that hyperlink, it'll take you into the vacancy, the detailed vacancy announcement itself. So this is what you see a screen of just a random CMS vacancy announcement for a public affairs specialist. The one thing I wanted to point out on this screen is that the very top will have some like demographic overview information, just, just a good starting point. But to the right hand side of that is going to be that hiring pass information. So it's a good place to just double check that this is the right position for you, you are eligible to apply. So for this particular one, you will see that is open to the public. So anybody would be able to apply to that. Um, 
Some you may see where it says only open to federal employees. So if you do not fall into that or any one of the other hiring paths noted, then you would want to move on to another um, vacancy announcement that you would be eligible. So if you scroll down, one of the first sections you come to is the duty section. And the duty section is important. Um, and the responsibility section is really where you want to, what you want to use to help decide, to help to, to decide whether the job is a good fit for you. Um, so it may not help you really um, decide whether you're qualified for the job, but looking at the day-to-day -day responsibilities of the job should be able to tell you whether it's something that you're interested in applying to. So that's really what you want to focus on in the responsibility section. Moving on, you'll see um, another section called requirements. And in the requirements section, the first thing you'll see is qualifications. So this is the most important section for anybody applying to USA Jobs. So I can't overstate this enough. Um, you want to read every single word of a vacancy announcement. They are a lot shorter than they used to be, although they're still sometimes long and sometimes can be confusing. Um, but it, I would say it probably becomes more confusing when you try to skim over things and don't read it thoroughly. So my suggestion, and um, I strongly encourage you to read every word very carefully. Um, but this qualification section is of the utmost importance. So what you will see in every vacancy announcement is a section where it says, in order to qualify for this grade level, you must meet the following. And typically it's gonna say, you must demonstrate in your resume at least one year, 52 weeks of specialized experience at the next lower grade level. So for anybody not in the federal government, that means almost nothing, because what does a GS9 mean to somebody who's coming from the private sector? Nobody really knows. So if you keep on reading, that's where you'll see um, what qualifications you need spelled out without the kind of government lingo. So if you read on, it says obtained in either the private or public sector in the following. So this particular announcement is obviously only applicable to this one, but it just says, you know, applying quantitative methods to analyze the effectiveness of public health programs, uh, preparing reports or responses applicable to healthcare. Again, what it says here is not as important as the fact that it's going to say something in every vacancy announcement. That is what you need to have reflected in your resume in order to qualify. So it is not good enough just to know that you have it or for you to skim over it in your resume. It should really be spelled out in your resume. Anything you see in this particular section, the qualification section is the most important section. If you don't make it past the qualifications uh, phase of the review, then you're going to get screened out and never get to the next step. Um, another thing you'll see I'll point out here is sometimes in some announcements and for some grade levels, you can substitute um, education for experience. So if you don't have the experience at some grade levels, you can qualify based on education. So again, reading thoroughly is so important um, because it, there's not like a, a, one, um, a one right answer for everything. Uh, you have to read each vacancy announcement. It's going to depend on the grade level and the position. Um, some positions you'll see, and I think I might have it on another slide, um, you have to have a certain education in order to qualify. Most of our positions are education, experience, or a combination of the two, and that's or, or, or. Um, but some positions, they have what they call a positive education requirement, where you not only have to have the qualifying experience, but you also have to have a certain number of credits in a certain degree program in order to qualify for that position. So please pay attention to the education experience, um, section. Um, and again, you'll see at the, at the bottom of this slide, they can also, the HR specialists can also combine experience and education. So if you have some education and some experience, that could uh, potentially qualify you as well. So this slide is really to point out the fact that Again, qualifications from the vacancy announcement must be reflected in your resume. It is not good enough to know you have it. It is not good enough just to be able to communicate it in, our, in an interview. It must be reflected on your resume. Your resume, that being said, um, it should be amended to ensure qualifications are stated for each position that you're applying to. 
In layman's terms, what I mean is you may need to tweak your resume um, for the positions that you're applying to. What you'll find is you likely won't have to rewrite it for every single position. You'll start to see common themes. If you have a certain background, education and experience, you'll probably be applying to some of the same types of positions over and over again. <clears throat> so you won't have to rewrite your resume for every single position. You'll see some common qualifications and common themes um, where you can start saving those additional resumes in your USA Jobs profile so you can reuse those for like positions. <clears throat> and human resource, the human resource specialists will not make assumptions about your qualifications. They will not say, oh, well, this person was a public health analyst. That was their title. So clearly they would have done this type of work with that title. They will not do that. It needs to be spelled out and it needs to be very clear in your resume. Okay, so another thing I wanted to point out in the requirements section under qualifications. Now, this is specific to you uh, to CMS. Um, all agencies, many agencies may have this option, but it may be located somewhere different in the application on USA Jobs. But I did want to point out that in addition to your resume needing to address all of the qualifications that are listed in the vacancy announcement, you will also be required to um, answer an occupational questionnaire, basically application questions. Um, you are able to preview those questions prior to actually pressing that apply button um, when you are just looking at the vacancy. So for CMS positions, it will be at the bottom of the qualification section. You see the big arrow pointed to it. Click the following link to view the occupational questionnaire. At that point, you'll be able to see all of the <clears throat> occupational questions. For CMS, those questions are almost exclusively multiple choice questions. They're typically knowledge or experience based questions. So I have experience analyzing policy. The answers are everything from I do not possess this experience all the way up to I'm an expert at this um, and then everything in between. So personally, what I do, although this is not this section is not as important as the qualifications, you have to have the qualifications reflected in your resume in order to make it to the next step. Um, but one of the things that I do to help me out. <clears throat> is I print off that questionnaire prior to applying. I make sure that if I'm answering in the positive uh, for any of those questions, so yes, I have experience analyzing policy and I consider myself an expert at that. I make sure to go back to my resume and make sure it's reflected in my resume somewhere. Obviously somebody, namely the manager, probably wants to see that if that question is being asked. Um, so I like to make sure that is also reflected in my resume in addition to the qualification requirements. Um, so as I mentioned, the application uh, questions can be uh, reviewed before applying. So you don't have to start the application process to be able to see them. Um, and then, like I said, while it's not as important um, as the qualification section, it is, it was important enough to be put as an application question. So I do like to go back um, and again, tweak my resume to ensure that I am uh, reflecting in my resume because after you make it through the qualifications piece, you also have to be um, well received enough to get a call for an interview. So even if you're on that list um, of qualified applicants and the manager has your, <coughs> excuse me, application, they still get to choose who they want to interview, and that's typically based on the resumes that they're looking at, not necessarily the actual answers to your questions. Although they do receive the, the answers to your questions, um, that is multiple choice. I, I know from experience, a lot of managers review resumes, and that's how they make decisions on who they want to interview. So to kind of wrap everything up, um, it's really important to invest the time to analyze the vacancy announcement before <clears throat> applying, right? So it's gonna take a little bit more time upfront, but if you put in that work, you're gonna put yourself in a better position um, to get through the steps of the hiring process. And in addition to that, um, one of the main points is to create a resume that targets your experience in the context of the announcement. So instead of using, <clears throat> excuse me, one generic resume for every position you're applying to, even if they're in slightly different disciplines, my suggestion to everyone is to take a little bit of time, 
target your resume. Again, if you're applying to the same position titles, you won't have to do it every single time, um, but it will put yourself in a better light when you get through that qualification phase so you can uh, put yourself in the best position uh, to move throughout that hiring process to that interview phase. So with that, um, I'm right almost at my 30, uh, 30 minute mark. So just wanna thank everybody um, for joining today. I do see a lot of action in the chat box. Um, so we will definitely uh, take some questions now that we have a little bit of time, but definitely wanna thank everybody today. Here is the website. I'm sorry, the email address that you can uh, always contact us, the, the CMS recruitment team um, at any time. If you have any additional questions, any follow up, CMS recruitment at cms.hhs.gov. Um, I want to encourage everybody to take a look at our additional uh, top 10 series webinars coming up. Um, we are running our webinars through January, so we have three more uh, webinars still to come. And of course, you can always uh, view and visit our previous webinars on our, youth, our CMS YouTube channel. So again, thank you everybody for joining today, and we will go ahead and take some questions.